Hi and welcome to Themico. In this lesson, we will study a crankshaft mechanism using the kinematic analysis. Remember, our mechanism has to be kinematically driven to employ the theory we have been studying about kinematic analysis. We will deal with the steps needed in the position analysis and later we will use this information as input to the velocity and acceleration analysis. We are proposing this as general as possible, so you will get all the tools to repeat the same procedure with other planar mechanisms in your future simulations. This is just the first of a series of videos we will be doing to explain the kinematic analysis. Ready? Great! Let's bring in a planar crankshaft mechanism. This is already a familiar mechanism to us. Having three bodies, let's define right away our set of generalized coordinates as we have previously done. Q equals Rxa, RyA, theta A, Rxb, Ryb, theta B, Rxc, Ryc, theta C transpose. These generalized coordinates correspond to the translations and rotations of the three bodies that conform to our crankshaft mechanism. The vector of constraints for this mechanism is as follows. Now, to make the mechanism kinematically driven, let's impose an angular velocity on the crank. Let's say the crank rotates at a speed described by an arbitrary function that depends on time. I could write it as theta a dot equals f of t. This is fine until now, but if I wanted to include it in the vector of constraints, I have to find a way of writing this constraint in terms of the generalized coordinates. Currently, it is in the terms of generalized velocity theta dot a. To do this change, let's integrate the equation to go from the velocity coordinate to the position coordinate. First, this equation can be written as d theta a dt equals f of t. Working it, d theta a equals f of t times dt. Working it again, theta a minus theta a initial equals integration from 0 to t of f of t times dt. To avoid carrying the integral symbol in all calculations, let's give a friendlier name to it. We are going to call it as g of t. Finally, we can introduce our imposed motion as a constrained equation in our constraint vector. Now, all our constraints are expressed in the terms of the generalized coordinates. This is the way it looks. Please notice that this is just the first step in the whole procedure. This first step is of extreme importance and I would suggest that you take your time to exercise what we have done here until you reach the same vector for our mechanism. In the next video, we are going to deal with the next step of this analysis procedure, which is constructing the Jacobian matrix. Thanks for watching and see you soon.